Kapoor and today we are going to talk about Global Drama in Paper 2, Module 25. Global Drama, let us first have an introduction. Women in Theatre from Greek to Contemporary Theatre in English. The restoration of women to theatre and history to the living repertory is inseparable from the advocacy for female playwrights. Susan Jones. The history of modern theatre can be traced back to Greek times when theatre came into being as a popular medium for entertainment. There were a number of playwrights whose plays have continued to inspire and engage the readers and audiences alike across centuries. Plays were mostly uh, written for competition between city states held annually when the dramatists presented their plays to great commercial success, but also for the pride of the city that they belonged to. The plays were lost over the centuries. The actors wore masks and the chorus was not an appendage to the main play as it came to be in the later centuries but rather it was an integral part of the action and at times even a high point in the action. Now let us take a look at some remarkable women Greek drama. The reality of the times however was that women were not considered equal to men. They had no political rights and were only of use as bearers of children and as part of religious ceremonies. The saying went that that time that it is better for a woman to be buried rather than to be married. It was considered improper for women to be even seen around in public places and all the important decisions of the family and the state were taken by men. In such a misogynistic society, women could hardly occupy spaces in creative writings, but dramatists like Sophocles and Euripides created a number of extraordinary women characters. Midia, in Midia by Euripides, fights a patriarchal society for her right to control her own life and in the process kills not only her husband Jason's new mistress Corinth, but also her own children from Jason. Electra, in Electra and Orestes, along with her brother Orestes, avenges the murder of her father from her mother. Clytemenstra in Orestia by Aeschylus murders Agamemnon who had forcibly married her after murdering her husband. When he comes back from Trojan war and spurns her, she plots his murder with her lover. Thus, even though women were marginal in Greek society, there were some extraordinary women characters created by Greek dramatists. Early Christian era, Rovistha. The picture did not change much during the first few centuries in Europe. The playhouses had often been frequented by prostitutes, luring prospective customers. The church forbade public enactment of plays and theatres were closed down. But it was the church which later found the plays to be a very useful platform for propagating its views among the illiterate and common people through morality plays. This gave a new impetus to theatre. Women were still not welcome in theatre as other dramatists or as actors, but as Helena Modjeska puts it, the link between ancient and modern theatre comes from the comedies by a woman German nun <coughs> in the 10th century, Rosvetha. She was a nun in the convent of Gandashim. She was from a Nobel family from South Germany and entered the convent as a Catholic nun. She was very well versed in Latin literature and wrote poetry and some comedies. She wrote six dramas in Latin and rhymed prose and wrote poetry and some comedies. Her writings were a response to the secular comedies that were being written at the time to which she objected, although she adopted the same style. The comedies were all performed by nuns of the convent before the royal court and high church officials. The plays usually had very strong women characters. Her most famous work 
was Gallicimus. But even during this phase of phenomenal growth of theatre in England, there was little approval for the participation of women in theatre and men continued to enact the roles of females. But in Italy and other countries across Europe, women were getting to be accepted on the stage. Isabella was among the most well-known actresses during the late 16th century in Italy and a number of theatre company called the Gelosi, women as patrons and as participants. There were a number of rulers who not only patronized theatre but were instrumental in development of theatre. Queen Elizabeth, Queen Anne, wife of James I, Catherine de Medici, Marie de Medici were not only great patrons but were instrumental in encouraging other influential women to patronize theatre. Queen Anne was known to have performed in several masks and was actively involved in production of court masks. Women across social classes were also dramatists, translators, shareholders, employees in theatres and most importantly they were audiences in performances making their presence in theatre gradually acceptable as actresses as well. Theatre in Germany women managers and actors. Another important milestone reached in the participation of women in theatre was their becoming managers and also running acting schools. First woman to manage a theatre company was from Germany where she became the manager of the first German court theatre. Mrs. Welthen was the wife of the company owner and after his death she became the owner and manager of the company. Frederica Caroline Neumber also called Numberine, started an acting school as well by the same name Leipzig School of Acting, built up an excellent repertory of plays. Her company faced stiff competition from more popular forms like burlesque, but she succeeded in creating a body of theatre with good quality productions. Another woman from German theatre who needs to be mentioned for her achievements as an actor at the beginning of the 19th century was Aniette Sophie Schroeder. Sophie Schroeder struck a balance between realist approach of Hamburg School of Acting and the idealistic poetic approach of the Weimar School. She set a bar for later generations to match or cross. The first appearance of women on English stage. Women were a part of mask and there was no objection to that. Participating in masque was not a taboo for women in the 16th century mainly because it was more of a social activity and they wore mask. But when it came to professional theatre, women were certainly not to be the part of the stage. The first time people saw women on the stage was in a performance of a French theatre company patronised by Queen of King Charles II, Henrietta Maria. But with the growing influence of Puritans in society, the company was thoroughly condemned and had to return to France. The enigma of early actresses. The actresses were enigmatic figures for people. Their presence in theatre was a novelty by itself, but there was more to the women in theatre than that. They were required to be trained in reading, writing, social skills, singing, dancing, along with possessing an attractive appearance. And since they were regularly entertaining royal and other noble families, they were also interacting socially with the elite. The first known performance where a woman enacted a lead role was Desdemona in the Moor of Venice in 1660 by Margaret Hughes. Later, many women started appearing on stage and the more remarkable among them being Nell Gwynn, Anne Lansgirl, Elizabeth Barry, Anne Oldfield, Sarah Siddle was one of the earliest actresses who gave respectability to the profession and made a mark solely by way of their talent and hard work. She was very famous for enactment of the tragic roles. Sarah Bernhardt was another remarkable actress who won international fame for her work. Apart from being acting, Bernhardt was also a writer and wrote several plays and poetry. She was a star dedicated to her name in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Aprabain and other 17th century women dramatists. 
By the time women were well established as actors in theatre as well as in films, the other journey that women had to undertake was as dramatists. After the first foray into writing with, of plays with Rosvita, there was a long wait and a gap of centuries before no development could happen and women did not find acceptance in theatre as dramatists. It was only by the middle of the 17th century that we come to the first woman dramatist, Apra Ben. She was a key restoration dramatist with several very successful plays like The Rover, The Forced Marriage. She wrote several novels and poetry in the later part of her life and is distinguished by the fact that she was possibly the first woman to have earned a living through her writings. Her life and achievements were brought into focus through the works of the Bloomsbury group of writers like Virginia Woolf. Though there were several women who wrote masks and translated plays like Jane Lumley, Mary Hobart, Margaret Cavendish, Elizabeth Egerton, Ben was one of the was the first one to win acclaim and credibility as dramatist. She was followed by several women who wrote dramas and had successful runs as dramatists, including Susanna Scent Liver, Sophia Lee, Elizabeth Inkball, and Joanna Bale. Elizabeth Carey, who wrote the tragedy of Miriam, was writing at the height of popularity in theatre in England, but it was very little recognition that she got for her work even in the period. Specific studies, though she was very successful writer. Margaret Cavendish, the writer of the Bell in Campo, Convent of Pleasure, was the other remarkable writer who was very successful, but who failed to find a mention among the greats of her age. When we move into the 18th century, there was quite a few women who are writing plays and record their works is found. Mary Picks, who wrote The Spanish Fights, is amongst them. Feminism and theater. By the beginning of the 19th century, the Feminist voices had started gaining strength. Following Ben's footsteps, a number of other women started writing plays and some of them became successful. These literary figures included Deliver Manley, Mary Peck, Susanna St. Liver, Frances Sheridan, Elizabeth Griffith, Elizabeth Ingball, Harriet Lee, Joanna Bale, and Hannah Cowley. Lillian Bellis and the Old Vic, a very important person who emerged in this phase and had a long-term impact on the direction of theater was Lillian Bellis. She inherited the Royal Victorian Hall and Coffee Tavern from her aunt and renamed it the Old Vic in 1912. After initial attempts to get only musicals organized at the place, she was compelled to stage plays there and they were mostly Shakespeare plays. Her contribution to nurturing English opera is a landmark and so is her enthusiasm for Shakespeare plays through which a lot of the stars of films and theatre were nurtured. Her enthusiasm for staging plays of high quality changed the way theatre was perceived or expectations of people had from a theatrical production. The Old Vic became an institution that nurtured generations of theatre persons in terms of writing as well as production. The burlesque and new groundbreaking. In the 19th century, a dramatic form emerged when the presence of women on stage was not unwelcome. These were the Victorian burlesques, which were parodies of classic plays and stories with a lot of parodies of popular songs, plenty of music, double meaning dialogues and a slapstick body comedy. By the middle of the 19th century, the burlesque became a very popular form. Although women performances in these plays were never looked upon with a lot of respect, but it did help in breaking the taboo on the presence of women on the stage. The suffragette movement and theatre. In the beginning of the 20th century, the suffragette movement was very prominent in Britain and women were fighting for their political and legal rights. Plays written specifically for the movement are as attractive for meetings and are often formed closing note of the meetings. Christopher St. John's first actress based on the life of Margaret Hughes is a remarkable play of this time. Harlem Renaissance and Women in Theatre. 
at almost the same time, women were breaking new grounds in America as part of the Harlem Renaissance. A period of intense creative activity by African American writers, visual artists and musician Rajaima M. Anderson played a pivotal role in the movement. She was a playwright and one of the founder members of the Harlem Experimental Theatre. Georgia Douglas Johnson was an important part of this movement in several ways. She hosted salon parties on Saturdays where freewheeling discussions were held by some of the most prominent figures associated with the movement. She was also a dramatist and several of her plays were well received. Marita Bonner, better known for her play Purple Flower, is an important figure of the Harlem Renaissance. Zora Neale Hurston became an extremely successful author and was widely placed for her novel. Her first play, Color Struck, was published in 1925 and a best known play, Mailbone, was in collaboration with Langston Hughes. Women in American Theatre Among the early American dramatists was Mary Otea Warren, whose plays were never staged. She wrote mainly political satires and emerged as a radical writer who inspired a lot of women to take up writing drama. A dramatist was inspired by Warren but wrote lighter satire was Susanna Rosen. In the first half of the 20th century, numerous women dramatists published their plays. Zona Gale wrote a total of seven plays as well as short stories, novels and poetry. Her best play, Miss Lulu Bet, was an adaptation of an earlier novel and was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 1921. One of the most influential playwrights of the time was Susan Glaspell. Glaspell won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 1930 for her play Allison's House. Another central figure of American drama was Lillian Hellman. Her best known plays are Children's Hour, The Little Foxes and Toys in Attic. Anna Cora Mowit was an actress who started writing plays and later turned to writing novels very successfully. She belonged to a respectable family and took to stage due to financial constraints. Her autobiography titled Autobiography of an Actress is an important account of the place and struggle of women of her times. By the beginning of the 20th century, women were firmly in place in theatre, but there was a lot to be desired regarding the capabilities and the contribution of women to theatre. Brecht was a big influence on theatre and gave a new direction to language of theatre. Women stage directors were hard to come by and directors found it difficult to work with freedom. The mid 20th century was an important phase when dramatists like Gertrude Steen and director John Littlewood created little spaces for women in theatre, important women dramatists. The plays of Gertrude Steen are as deeply influenced by modernism. Steen was an influential figure in drama and literary life of the United States. She used obscure language and shifted grammar in a way that suited her. Joan Littlewood, on the other hand, was deeply influenced by theatre of Brecht. She established the theatre workshop with her husband Gary Ruffles and some other friends. It operated out of Stratford till it went to Theatre Royale in 1953. It won international recognition for its productions including Brecht's Mother Courage and Sheila Delaney's A Taste of Honey. Littlewood combined slapstick humour with serious satire to set a new style in improvised theatre dramatists like and Jellico at the Royal Court and Sheila Delany at Theatre Workshop were important writers in Britain and Susan Glaspell won a lot of respect as a dramatist. However, the following years did not find a generation of women dramatists inspired by their successes. It was only in the 80s that we find Carol Churchill, Pam James, Beth Henley, Marsha Norman and Wendy Wesserstein, inspiring a generation of young women to take up careers as dramatists. Let's take a look at feminist theatre. By the time we come to the 70s, feminist movement has led to a radical awareness about need of mainstreaming marginalized half of the world. In theatre, 
the women movement was reflected in the form of development of the feminist theater. Feminist theater could be seen as a mix of feminist critical theory applied to theater and also as a laboratory for feminist ideas. By the time we come to the 80s, the feminist approach is very well defined with a lot of variations. Playwrights like Simone Bemosa, Helen Ciso, Carol Churchill, Adrian Kennedy and Maria Irene Fornes concentrated the, the issues of women's marginalization. They redefined the way theater is looked upon itself and deconstruct the way stories were told to bring out a narrative about women embedded in the grand narratives born from a man's imagination even when they were stories about women. In the 1970s, several shows created and performed by black were mainstream successes. Notse Shanjes for colored girls who have considered suicide when rainbow is enough, a series of poetic dance monologues in support of black women set the standard for much feminist theater. Maria Irene Farnes, The Successful Life of Three, Susan Laurie Parks, Top Dog Underdog are remarkable examples of feminist theater. Carol Churchill's Top Girls brought her into limelight and established her as a leading voice not just in feminist theater but as a leading British dramatist of previous century. Her works have called attention to the way theatre represented women. Wendy Wessenstein is one of the most commercially successful dramatists of American theatre. Her Heidi Chronicles deals with life of Heidi from high school through her growing up and her experiences with the feminist movement. Though some scholars were critical of the literary approach of her plays, it is generally accepted that they did not carry the awareness about the issue and experiences to a broader public. Women in Australian Theatre Among major Australian women playwrights are Vanessa Bates, Joanna Murray Smith, Lali Cutts, while the director Kate Blanchet earned a worldwide reputation through her production in association with Melbourne Theatre Company. Patricia Cornelius is a playwright, novelist, dramaturge, founding member of Melbourne Writers Theatre and Van Bendham is a renowned theatre activist and critic. Among the major dramatists of feminist theatre are Alma de Gore, Dorothy Hewitt, Neil Jansenska, Eva Johnson, Jenny Kemp, Suzanne Spurner, over the last three decades, they have explored ideas like racism, rape, mother-daughter relationships, man-woman relationships and ethnicity in their plays. They have explored the ideas from the perspective of women and their experiences as distinct from the responses elicited by a predominantly patriarchal system. Women in Canadian theatre. The Canadian women playwrights are as diverse and multicultural as the multi-ethnic Canadian society. Canada has an active theatre scene with quite a lot of participation of women. Women are present in departments like costume designing, assistant directors, administrators, though their participation as actors, dramatists and directors, the limelight people is still only in about a third of the total productions. Sharon Pollock has greatly contributed to establishing the identity of Canadian theatre, though her works as well as her views about theatre. She set up Gary Theatre as a place where plays were staged and people can walk for walk in for watching without even purchasing a ticket. Joanne MacLeod explores the racial and social issues in her plays, which are mainly political. One of the most remarkable plays is the hope slide. It is a monologue about the struggle of an actress to live on her own terms a life unfettered by social constraints. Janet Scars, Marie Clemens and Judith Thompson are some of the other well-known dramatists from Canada. Tracy Powers play Miss Shakespeare and Jay Caesar with their all-female cast exploring the new paradigm of storytelling about strengthening the voice of women in Canadian theatre and in theatre across the world is important. 
Thus to conclude we find that women have come a long way in making a mark in theatre, but there are a vast gaps and areas where a lot of groundwork needs to be covered. Hope comes in the form of an observation by a noted theatre critic about British theatre which could be equally applied to global theatre. He said that while it seems that no exciting new talent seems to be emerging in male playwrights, but the theatre is abuzz with fresh ideas and explorations by a host of extremely talented women. Thank you so much friends.